Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the student panel. Um, my name is Amy Janssen Brennan. I'm the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Admission here at RSM. So my team and I are responsible for all of the selection for our uh, bachelor programs, our pre-master programs, and our master programs. Um, during this uh, panel session today, uh, we have a couple of students out in the audience with microphones, and because I can't really see anyone very well from here, they're going to be in charge of uh, handing the microphone into the audience. So they're going to try to distribute it evenly, so not only this side gets to answer questions, but try to be patient. Um, when you ask uh, questions, try to keep them kind of general. So if you have a really specific question about yourself, like, am I eligible? Um, that's kind of those questions you can better ask at the panel uh, downstairs. We have some admission staff down there, so we'd be happy to answer those questions. Um, before we get started, I'd like to introduce our students. We'll start down here with Hans. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Hans. I'm uh, Dutch, as you probably figured out already. <laughs> I did the uh, Dutch VVO. So if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to uh, help you. Okay, hi guys, my name is Eva. I'm Dutch as well. I also did VWO. I come from the middle of the Netherlands, but I'm currently living in Rotterdam. And if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to help you out. Hi everyone, my name is Eliza. I'm a third year student coming from Belgium, but I actually lived 10 years in France where I did my uh, French baccalaureate. So once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hi, my name is Chaitanya. I'm a second year IBS student. I was born and brought up in the Netherlands, but I live in India. And I did the International Baccalaureate. So if any questions regarding the IB, feel free to ask me. OK, now it's always the first question in the audience. Who dares ask the first question? All right, we have a first victim. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, hello, Elisa. Uh, yeah. What type of baccalaureate did you do in France? Uh, I did the US. Okay. And uh, with OIB, so American section, so it was like with extra English, and so some um, some exams were like all in English. But uh, around here, like most of the French students did the regular US or S baccalaureate. Okay, thank you very much. Next question. Just a question regarding the IB. I mean, you, you kind of know there's quite a workload in the IB. How does it compare to, for example, transitioning to here? The workload, I mean, is it? The workload in the IB compared to IB? Yeah, to here, like. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty comparable from the beginning. But what I will say is the IB does prepare you for the workload that you're going to get in IBA. Because in the beginning, it can seem similar. Because you have your assignments, you have your exams, you have your weekly tests coming up. So you have to be prepared for that. In addition, you have the problem of you know, adapting to a different environment, living on your own. So it's much more. But academically, IB does prepare you. And it, you, you will see similarities in the assignments that you get. Thank you. Next person. <laughs> Don't be shy. I know you guys are bursting with questions. Ah, we have one over there. Uh, just wondering how many Dutch students and international students, what's the uh, split? Uh, well, the general division is um, <coughs> about 35% Dutch and the rest is international. That's a general line over the last years. And it was the case for our, uh, our year, so that's one year ago as well. Yeah, that actually gen that, that can vary uh, per year. Um, some years uh, we have more internationals, some years we have more Dutch students. Uh, because we have to work with the numerous fixes, the rank system, um, yeah, it depends also on how strong a cohort is with a dirt certain um, yeah, type of diploma. So that's something we try. Uh, we, we, our ideal split would be about 40% Dutch, 60% uh, internationals. But uh, yeah, that's not something we always, ca we can't really steer it very well. So yeah. Next. Uh, yeah. Um, Elisa, you said you are in your uh, third year um, uh, yeah, of uh, third study. Year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what, in what specialization uh, did you go? And what are you doing, actually? OK. Um, so I actually did, um, because they changed the curriculum this year. So like this cohort that just came in, the, so the first year is of this year are doing this new curriculum. So I'm with the old one, and we don't have any specialization. But I went on exchange 
um, during my first, uh, the first semester. So, so I can't really answer the specialization question because I, I'm not doing that. Okay. And uh, the other ones? Does anyone has a specialization? No. No, because we're no. all, we're all oh. second year, so oh, it's okay. uh, mandate this so year, so there's no one who... Yeah. Uh, okay, and do, do you have an idea of what you're going to choose and why? Um, I'm going uh, on exchange. I want to go, st I'm probably going to Korea University. Yeah, I hope to go to uh, ESSEC in Sergi. And after that, you mean masters, like specialization after that as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit focused on marketing. But that's very general still. Okay. Oh yeah, for afterwards, I probably want to do a master in the innovation area. I'm really interested in that. Okay. So I'm currently in the process because I'm in the third year and uh, I want to do my master's right away. But I know a lot of people who also want to take a gap year. And I am still think like hesitating between marketing and consulting. So I think I'm going to do something made probably general as well to kind of visit like discover a bit more of those areas and then choose? Uh, I don't have a big clue of what I want to do yet, but <laughs> I know I want to do an internship in my uh, third year first uh, trimester. And after university, I'm still looking at my options, uh, deciding what I really want to do and moving accordingly. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, we've heard uh, people talk about Rotterdam School of Management about, about being a force for positive change. Um, do you notice that in like everyday life, or how do you how do you notice that there is that is their um, main mission statement, or that's what I called it? Yeah, I mean you notice it in um, in a lot of things. You can do a lot of extracurriculars. For example, you have the food lab where they focus on that, but also just in your regular courses. For example, we just had corporate finance, and then we have a guest lecture where they focus on sustainability and corporate finance, so they incorporate that even there. So you still notice it in your, it's not, just do it, it's not just about doing business, making money. They always say like, make a positive interact, be, be a positive change. They also make, make that become very clear in the lectures in my opinion. Yeah, you also have like a, an actual course, like I had it last year about leadership, sustainability and governance. And I think there's like one that is pretty much the same in the new curriculum. So there is like an emphasis as, as said. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, is it possible to balance intensive sport activities, like with the workload of, uh, especially in the first year of university? Like, in, is it manageable to yeah. sport? Yeah, I I think it's doable to do extracurricular activities next to your IBA studies. It's just uh, make sure that you need to make sure that you keep on track and that you do lots of planning. At least that's now I'm seeing as a Dutch person that. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, I think it's true. If you keep on track and you keep doing what you need to be doing, it's really possible to do something next to it. For example, I, uh, I still have, and I also had last year, a side job for every Saturday. I'm following extra language courses. So there's, there's really some opportunities there to do next to your IBA studies. And coming to your question specifically about sports, you were asking about sports specifically, right? So yeah, I, I was, I'm a part of the badminton club, so we have coaching th three times a week, and there's also boxing, which is one time a week. So I'm able to handle that pretty well with studies, so that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, with sports, I also did field hockey in my first year as a side thing, and I also had a side job. It was all very, very much doable, and it's also fun <coughs> to do if you just, I don't think I, any of my friends just does studying. A lot of them have their Erasmus sport bars, they go to the gym, it's like a stress reliever, so a lot of people do that. Uh, good morning. Uh, could any one of you, or, or all of you, could uh, give us a few words regarding uh, the international uh, internship or the exchange? Yeah. <coughs> the two possibilities. Uh, so I can share my experience on the exchange. So I don't really know what you want to know specifically, but uh, I went to Singapore at the National University. And so during your second year, there's like all an admissions process and you have to put a lot of choices in there. And um, I think it's beginning of February, you get the answer to know where you're going. And so I went there for from the end of July until the beginning of December. And in general, it was a, an amazing experience. I was like, Again, in a very international environment, I was with the, in a university where there are a lot of exchange students. I could take the classes that I was more interested in, and I was o o also able to travel. So I really, really like my experience there. And when you come back, it's just you realize how lucky you were to be able to go for a few months uh, somewhere in the world. 
Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say much, but I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, is the course very math heavy? I think it's balanced, sort of. So you need no. you need math skills. It's you have no. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, I agree. Sorry. I agree. No. <laughs> wow, no. No, no, I agree. I agree. So no, I think there's a real balance. You need you need to have some basic math skills. Um, but it's not advanced or really high, super difficult math. And next to that, you have lots of theory, and it's uh, as well. It's, it's it's applied mathematics. So, for example, in finance, you use formulas. You need to understand the rationale behind the formulas. We don't need to understand to develop models yourself. So it's not very difficult. It's I think it's in a way, if you have the right criteria, it's doable. It's not that difficult. Yeah. Maybe I can elaborate a little bit on that. Um, uh, a lot of people are wondering about the math level, and one of the reasons why for IBA we ask for a seven average, if you're doing the Dutch Fabio, um, for mathematics is that we have, um, we have two, basically, um, populations that we can very easily compare. We have the selected IBA group, which we've been asking for years for a seven math uh, grade, and we have our non-selected open program uh, Dutch language uh, but uh, And yeah, so then you can get in regardless of your math grade. And we've noticed that if you don't have a seven average uh, at the end of your Favio, you have a very, very low chance of passing this program. So that is one of the reasons we emphasize this, both with the Dutch language program and IBA. Math is doable, but you have to be reasonably good at it. If you're not good at math, then this is probably not the great program for you. Next question. Yeah, here. <laughs> Yes, uh, what, would be, what would be your main motivation for starting this program in particular? Like, uh, what would be your, uh, when you, did you know you wanted to do this study? So, uh, for me, it was when I looked up the university, it was the more the international aspect of it. When you have a classroom that's 60% international, it was very you know, um, appealing to me. Also, the program itself, the, the subjects are interesting, but also it doesn't force you to it doesn't restrict you to one course of specialization. You get exposure to different function of business and you get to choose which ones you find interesting based on how you study them and then make a decision of what you want to do accordingly. They don't say you have to do finance, you have to do accounting. You get exposure to all business functions. So that's something that I found uh, appealing. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, yeah, what I, I really, like, yeah, I remember. Um, <laughs> I didn't remember the question. Uh, I really kind of fell in love the, with the place when I went to the open days here, so when I was at your spot. And I, I don't know, I kind of saw myself um, walking around on campus here, and, but I knew kind of early that I wanted to do business. And again, like, I, didn't, I wanted to like, know a bit about everything because I didn't know what I would like most. So I think for that, IBA is really nice. And then when I heard that 60% of the, the people here were international, I was like, I don't think I can find this in many places. So I think that was a strong point as well. Yeah, I mean, as a Dutch person, I can say from a Dutch perspective, because I needed to decide between Bedrijfskunde and IBA, I liked the international aspect, that's why I decided to study here, and also why Rotterdam specifically, because I also went to other uh, universities, like the VU in Amsterdam, but I just felt more with this city itself, I liked the like, no-nonsense, no-bullshit mentality of the Rotterdam <laughs> people, like, niet lullen maar poetsen in Dutch, so no, I, I like that a lot, so that's yeah. why I decided to study here. Uh, yeah, I agree, I haven't much to add to that, <laughs> yeah, same Thank reasons. You. Hello, uh, my name is Harold. A question to Eva. Uh, uh, what do you see as the main difference between uh, the Dutch version Bedrijfskunde and uh, the English one, the IBA? And why did you choose for IBA? Uh, is, there, is there a big difference between the two, or are they basically is the, just comes back to having more international students and having, having being taught this in English? Or uh, there is. Those two are main differences. It is English, and it's also the difference here. You have like an international environment, but there also is some difference within subjects. For example, we get subjects which really focus on how to do business in an international environment. How are you dealing with different cultural people? If you have a German and then you have a Dutch person, like what can go wrong? What are the conflicts? We focus on that quite a lot, and that's our, in the end. I see myself in the end going to an international company, and that's why I decided to do IBA instead of Bedrijfskunde. 
Yeah, it's learning by doing. Getting in touch with people from different country, and getting to realize that you did something culturally very wrong, and that, that that's why the cooperation didn't work, and you learn how to solve that and how to deal with that and how to communicate with these people. That's a really a valuable skill, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, hi. This is a general question. Um, what was the hardest thing for you that you had to deal with when you first moved to Ro Rotterdam and enrolled to the university? Uh, for me, it was managing the transition between living like with your parents and living by yourself, kind of taking care of everything as well as study, kind of understand how the system works, also study everything in English, making friends, uh, like all of this, like just in the beginning, it was like a really, really big change and it took me a few months to adapt, but you kind of like, you everything goes better once you understand that it's the same for everything, for everyone, like everyone is in the same boat. And when you understand that, it makes it a bit easier, I would say. Yeah, the same for me, like the basics. I also lived here, like figuring out how the washing machine works, that type of stuff. <laughs> I was calling my mom regularly, like, how did you do that? And <laughs> yeah, that's a difference, but also it can become quite overwhelming. Their university offers so many things. You can join sports, study, you can join all those associations. So at one point I was really having difficulties with time management, but then again, you have your mentor program and my mentor really helped me with figuring that out, helping me with just planning and just studying on time. Yeah, <laughs> especially the older associations, that was a thing I <coughs> really took a long time to figure out how, where I wanted to be as a student. But yeah, and, and I have to say that the tr transition to English, as for a Dutch student, um, I wasn't really good at English. It took me some efforts up until the last year. I really ha developed some skills, and then in one or two weeks, that was all fine. You used to the fact that you need to speak English and that you can't speak Dutch to your friends, and then you just learn it, same as with the cultural thing. You just learn it, you have to learn it, and you will learn it, and that's nice as well. For me, it was also getting used to the city because it's the idea of living in another place altogether. So everything for you is new. So getting used to the modes of transport, you know, the, you know, which train line to take, where to park your bike, how, you know, <laughs> also like simple things like cooking and laundry, like they said. So it's a lot of new things that you encounter when you join university. generally, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I had a question about housing. So like, how did you guys um, find a room the first time you came here? Uh, for me, so the thing is, my brother studied in the same university as me and he graduated the year before. So when he graduated, I just got in touch with his landlord and he gave me a, you know, a room. So I was, it's pretty simple, it's pretty simple. And I got to extend my contract to this year. So I'm happy I'm on the roads and I have a house. Um, yeah, I wasn't as lucky. <laughs> um, so, um, um, I don't know if you know, but on campus you have two buildings, the Hatta building and the Xior. And um, these are two buildings that are for first year international students. And so I got a spot in there. Um, and so I was living, so I was living in the Hatta building with two other girls that were doing a different program that were also international. And we were sharing a bathroom and a kitchen and we had our <laughs> own room. And I really, really liked it because Already for my parents, they were they knew that it was something serious, that I wouldn't get scammed, and that I was on campus, so it was safe. And um, yeah, I, I I really recommend it. Um, but the thing is that the spots are quite like they go away very fast. So if you know that you're interested in in those things, I would um, suggest to apply as soon as possible when you get the response. <laughs> Yeah, with housing for me, um, because I'm not an international, so I okay. couldn't live on campus. Uh, the first year I got a studio in Rotterdam uh, through a realtor office. I know you can also do it on Kamernet, websites like that. You can also figure something out. And since this year, I'm living with two of my friends from the IBA program. We found a, an apartment together, but also through a realtor office. Yeah, and I'm one of the very few students who still lives at home. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I can't say much about housing. <laughs> Well, besides the general information. There's a lot of uh, information about housing on the RSM website. Um, so, um, yeah, we suggest that you go there. Uh, for the internationals, um, yeah, 
if you are looking for the uh, housing on campus, um, you can't apply for it until you have an offer. So with IBA, if you are in the first wave of people who get their offers um, and you're interested in on-campus housing and you need to apply for it as soon as it opens, we'll send you information on that. Um, but you really need to apply at that moment. Um, you can't apply earlier because it just doesn't open uh, earlier. So, um, but you can't apply for that until you have an offer of admission. So unfortunately, if you are on the waiting list and you don't get a, um, an offer until maybe May or something, then the, uh, the on-campus housing uh, will be full. But there are still a lot of other options in the city. Yes, thank you. Um, you hear a lot about uh, the difference between being between IBA and Bedrijfskunde, uh, that at IBA, because it's a numerous fixer study, that there's more of a culture of working hard and studying a lot for your good grades. Uh, do you notice that a lot, or well, is that just hoax? I have not done Bedrijfskunde, and I have not a real friends there, but that is true. That has a general, and, they, and I've even heard from people on, the, on their RSM offices that there's a slight difference in performance as well. I mean... And it has to do with that you come in as a student that had to apply for it, really. It doesn't really... There's a slight more focus on working harder, I guess. I, that's what I've heard, but again, it's not from experience. No, I want to say that like I'm part of STAR, and I'm in a marketing committee, and there we have both BA students and IBA students. And with the BA students, I don't notice a lot of a difference between me and them. Like I do maybe like we are more hard working, but I think in BA you just need to work just as hard as IBA to pass your courses. So I don't yeah, really think there's course. such a yeah, difference. Yeah, it just depends on the individual. Depends on the individual and like the persons I talk to from BA, they're still just as open and hard working as it, IBA it people. It is also the case, what I've heard is again, uh, that's sounds uh, agreeable is that especially internationals tend to be more hard working because they really need to come here. They have more at stake than Dutch people who already live in the country or relatively close to home. So they say that these people can generally work a bit harder, but that's, again, that's not a fa hard fact or something. And again, I think uh, one of the things that uh, makes a big difference is the fact that uh, in order to get into IBA, you must have uh, certain grades for mathematics and English, for example. That's not the case for the Dutch program. Mm -hmm. So you do have students and that the, the, the uh, rate of students who doesn't pass the first year is quite a lot higher in the BA program. But that, cause that is mostly because students don't listen to our advice and think, oh, well, I'll pass even though I'm not very good at math. And again, we can't emphasize that enough. This, we don't tell students this for, uh, for nothing. Um, so that's one of the reasons as well. A lot, of, a lot of the students in the BA program really probably shouldn't be there to begin with. So that's one of the problems. But after the first year, that's all problem is solved. And then I think the populations are quite uh, similar. In what way do um, Bedrijfseconomie and uh, or um, MNO differ to IBA? I mean, I was in management and organization. Yes. And uh, that's in high school course, or mm -hmm. do you mean as a university course? As a high school course. Um, well, like, f I had MNO as well. Um, <coughs> it prepares you for only one subject in the entire business course, or actually two, on a very low basis. But I found it, especially for the accounting course, useful that I had MNO because there were certain basics. I just understood them, and I understood quite easily how it developed in the more advanced models. So you had the basics, so it's, it's useful, but for other courses you, you won't need it. So it's really for a very small base for finance, and for accounting it can be useful, and besides that, you don't really need to have such subjects. No, because they like, um, it's a part of a functional area and that's only accounting. And for example, with economics, I had that in high school, IBA covers all your economics in just one block. So. Yeah. It's a higher pace and you can still, it's easier if you had it before because you recognize things, but you can just learn it in one go no. as well. Because the management organization course, it sounds like you focus on a management and organization, but the course actually doesn't. It focuses on accounting mostly and finance and not on organizational structures and stuff. Yeah, it's very small, but it's too basic to really have an advantage. Yeah, so for accounting it can be nice, but besides that. Uh, can you actually uh, explain how does the mentor organization work? Yeah, yeah, so in your first year, 
I think it's like the first day when you, you start IBA, you're put in a group with uh, around 10 to 15 other first year students, and then you have like a, a second year IBA student that kind of follows you around, creates like a WhatsApp group, and kind of takes care of you the first few months. And if you have any questions, you can go um, to see that person. And um, there's some activities that are organized as well. So it's, yeah. it's really nice because at least you have someone to, to go to if, if you're really, like, I don't know, sad or something's going wrong or you can't really adapt. I don't know, like, a lot of things can happen. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. We also have student advisors for that, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the mentor group is more easy going yeah, because yeah. it's someone who has been there, done that. Yeah, they can give you advice on everything. Yeah, and it's also social events. Like my mentor always took us, took the whole group for drinks. So that was also <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's everything at once. Yeah, it depends on the on the person. Yeah. Hi. Uh, do you know the success rate after one year and three years? Um, for the IBA program, I think last year uh, only. About 18% did not pass the first year. Um, again, a very large difference with the Dutch language program, uh, which I think 35% didn't pass the first year. Um, so it's a, quite a high uh, yeah, success rate. Uh, yes. So which grades are most important for your application? For example, is my Spanish grade as important as my business economics grade? Uh, for, the ad for the application, uh, yes. we look at two, uh, two grades very closely. Uh, that's your grade for English, mm -hmm. and that's important, obviously, because the whole program is in English. Um, and the other grade we look at is mathematics. Um, your other grades are important, but only as a whole. So you're, you get points for your general uh, grade point average. So that means that all the grades that add up to your final grade average uh, are actually uh, equal of, of equal importance. Um, but we do focus on mathematics and English because those two, uh, we have uh, done a lot of research into the success uh, rates of our students and see if we could see um, yeah, what, what courses uh, determine success rate and those were the two classes that uh, were significant. Uh, so that's why we focus on those two courses in particular. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to add on that. Um, does the, the, that grade on the IELTS exam or the TOEFL exam counts towards this gem to reach a um, selection points or just one on your school? Um, for certain diplomas, for example, the Dutch Favio or the International Baccalaureate uh, or the German Arbitur, uh, the level of English taught at uh, a technical school is sufficient enough. So if you get a certain grade, then we know your English is good enough for you to succeed here. Uh, for, uh, for all the other diplomas, um, where English is not as high a level, um, then you need to do a standardized test. So English, uh, IELTS, TOEFL, Cambridge, for example. If you pass that exam uh, to the level that's required on the website, then um, that's, that's good. We don't look further at your English uh, grade, but of course it's part of your GPA because, um, yeah, all your grades are used in the calculation. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Uh, question to students. Um, if you look back at your uh, whole study at the MBA, what is the best thing that uh, you remember and uh, gave you uh, inspiration for the, for the future? It could be both the educational or uh, social, whatever. The best thing that inspires us for the future? Uh, for me, my, my, one of my best, like, I had two actually. <laughs> um, so it was more about like extracurricular activities because um, uh, I was part of the honors program last year as a second year student. And um, so it's extra classes on um, Silicon Valley, entrepreneurship, strategy in general. And so during the year we had extra classes on those. and. Um, the highlight of the year, I'd say, was um, a Silicon Valley trip. So we went to Silicon Valley for a week and we visited different companies. We went to Google, Dropbox. Uh, yeah, we, def like, we visited different stakeholders, also like lawyers. And it was just amazing to be able to kind of see it in real life, all, all the things that we learned during the year. And I think it was really, really an inspiring trip. Yeah, like there, I can't really name one or two things. There are so many, especially the way I think has really changed. Uh, I, I, I notice that I'm much more critical towards certain statements. Uh, also in the news, you read the news differently. 
you see different things and you kind of figure out that if you want to work in a certain position later, you want to do it in a certain way. Or if you want to start your own organization or you want whatever you're going to do, you have a certain vision of how sh things should be. Uh, but also culturally, I'm really, the, the, I really like it about this course. I've learned, I've, I'm just a Dutch guy, no international background whatsoever. And I came here and I learned a lot and I really like that as well. And I think that's a valuable experience for me. Yeah, same for me as well with the cultural thing. I'm also very Dutch, born and raised here, so never had that much experience. But now my roommate, one of the, them is from America, the other one is from Poland, and it's really interesting how our dynamics are. And I really like, I could have never seen myself just interacting with so many people from all those different types of cultures. But here we are, and here I am. So that has been my most, most inspiring thing. Uh, one thing that stuck out for me was that we do have a lot of group assignments. So in those group assignments, you get paired up with different people uh, from different, you know, different backgrounds, different cultures. So you get different perspectives on different matters that you didn't have before. You start looking at things differently, mm -hmm. which is something that I've gained from uh, my experience so far, and I'm, I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> um, a question for international students. Uh, do you know Dutch? And did you learn it beforehand, or did you learn it whilst living here? And is it necessary to find a job, a Dutch language? I knew a bit of Dutch because I was born and brought up over here. But when I moved back to India, it kind of got away from me because I didn't practice as much, practice it as much. But when I came back here, it's starting to get back to me because I'm, you know, trying to practice it with my friends. As far as jobs go. I have written it down that I have conversational uh, basic skills in Dutch, but I don't know how much value that adds to my application. <laughs> uh, uh, as for applications, I, from a lot of friends who've applied, you know, I've master's friends who've applied for jobs, they say that Dutch is necessary for you to get a good job in the Netherlands, and it does get a bit more difficult if you don't have some knowledge of the Dutch language. Does that answer your question? But you also have. I would say we have kind of a yeah. lot of options here to learn Dutch if you're motivated. I was in my first year <laughs> and uh, I took some classes with the Erasmus sharing language or language sharing. Or, and you also have like the, the regular classes from the Erasmus uh, language and training center, I think, where you actually get diplomas and, and you can also like get extra credits. But in general, like for the everyday life, uh, you really don't need it at all. Like I, like I just did for like these courses for a trimester, and I didn't continue, and it didn't help me that much, and and yeah, I don't really know anything about like the Dutch language, and I don't have any problems. Okay, thank you. But a tip: if you are an international and you want to stay in the Netherlands after yeah, yeah. you graduate, uh, we highly recommend that you learn Dutch uh, because yeah, you are living here and. Um, uh, an international with a high level of Dutch on their CV is going to be uh, invited to uh, uh, an interview much quicker than an international who, who doesn't speak any Dutch. Um, I know this from experience because I am an international myself, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you need to have a seven for maths, but is there still a preference for either maths A or maths B? No. No, um, you, math A and B, is, they're both uh, fine. Um, actually, we have in our uh, research, we saw that students who scored really high for Mathematics B tended not to do so well in our program. We think that's probably because their, their minds are so differently wired that they, they probably should have done econometrics. Um, but, um, so no, we don't have, uh, we don't really mind. I think probably this kind of A is a bit handier for but I don't know if either of which math you guys did. I did A. I, did a. I also and did A, but okay. doing some tests, when we get right formulas, mathematics B is more I, and easy. I, but I had a lot of difficulty getting my grades right as well. I can say that I wasn't really that good at math, but I knew I wanted to do it. And then that's, I think, the difference between being good at math and having the motivation to, will, to be willing to do mathematics. And I had that, and that's how I got in. And it's also not just dry math. You're not learning only formulas and that's it, you learn it in a business context because we're studying in business after all, so the mathematics you get, it makes sense. It makes more sense to me than what I had in high school because like, it's, it's like connected to companies. So. Yeah. And a tip for those of you who uh, have done the right level of math, but your grade is not uh, what we ask for, um, you can still get into the first tier of the ranking if you choose to take our mathematics exam. So say you think, well, I can do it, I just didn't. 
in high school. If you choose to take the mathematics exam and you pass to, I think we asked for a 75%, then we won't look at your math grade anymore. And then you could still be put into the first tier. So that is something you can look into. Um, it's, a, it's a test we don't give ourselves. It's an online exam, it's proctored, so you can do it anytime you want. Um, there'll be the, the people who are proctoring the exam will ask you to show your webcam, you have to show your room and under your desk and everything, make sure you don't have uh, you know, somebody who's in the corner doing the math test for you. So it's all, uh, it's, it's all very well monitored. But this is something that you can do, and that's also a tip for your English. Say your English grade uh, in high school was not great, but you're like, I know I can do this. You can choose to take a standardized English exam, and if you reach the achieved level we asked for, we again will not look at your grade, and you can still put yourself in the first tier. So that's a tip for you guys. Hi, uh, I have a question. The group is uh, quite big. The first year is 600 uh, students, or 500, uh, 520, I believe, last 500. year. 500. <laughs> huh? 500? Yeah. Uh, so that means really big uh, groups of you know, when you have uh, college, uh, when you have uh, class, like actually, teacher. how much uh, student-teacher um, interaction is there? Like, for instance, case study. Uh, in, in other business schools, you have the case studies where you maybe with 20 or 50 people and you interact a lot with your ideas about the solution for a company. Is that in the whole program uh, no. anywhere in the first three years? There, there, are, there are quite a few courses which have workshops. Uh, workshops in, I think for Dutch, um, mostly known as practicums in D Dutch universities. It's basically a bit like a high school class, but then very interaction based. So then you really get in that, did what you have. Uh, there are also courses who don't have it, would only have lectures. And then you have, you, you're in such a room. This room is actually the room you will be in most, especially in your first year. And then will be, can be full of people, depends on how high the attendance is. But then there is mostly a one way communication with some possibility to ask questions, but not a real relationship with your teacher. Yeah, and like the workshops are really useful. For example, during professional development, you have a teacher in like a small group, we will help you with CV interviews and stuff like that. And in this big of a room, the teachers who are presenting even say like, if you have any questions, feel free to come up to me and a lot of students do during the break. So in my experience, I've never felt as if I was just a number out of the 500 people, never at all. They make it feel very personal. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't really have anything to add. <laughs> I have nothing more to add, but it just summed up pretty well. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for Elisa. Um, did the, no yeah, did yeah, okay. the OIB uh, baccalaureate help you a lot to get in here? Uh, I think it did because um, I was used to writing essays in English and just having like orals and also having a kind of a a big workload, so I think it helped for that, but I only had um, English literature and history, so that didn't help as much, like, not in the actual knowledge, but just, like, the way you work and the way you, like, organize, like, organize your self-study, I think for that it helps. Um, for the IB specifically, what math level did you have and how is that comparable to the math that you do now? So I took mathematics SL, the standard level, and for me, the math-based subjects, SL did provide a basis. In my first year, we had a mathematics course, which was an extension of what I'd done in SL. So whatever I'd done in IB formed a sort of, formed a sort of basis for what I did. Also, the specific topics like calculus, linear uh, equations, any of the graphing mathematics, all those, they do, uh, you, do pro you do come along those in the subject that you do in IBA. So it forms a good basis for what you're going to do. And then you, you learn additional theory on top of that, which you can apply to mathematics. And it it's kind, of, kind of builds up on what you've already done. Does that answer your question? Thank you. And something we've added to the curriculum, actually, you guys haven't done it yet, I think, but uh, we started it this year. Um, because the level of mathematics, especially in the IBA program, is, it's quite uh, diverse because we have students from all over the world. Uh, we've now introduced something that they, they take, um, we ask all of our students to take like a, a mathematics exam. It doesn't count for anything, you can't fail it, but you get the results yourself. And then we offer online modules. So say in one part of the mathematics you weren't very good, you're 
quite weak. Then uh, we have online uh, modules that are uh, taught by our professors that you can take in the summer to get yourself up to speed before you start. Uh, because this is something, yeah, again, I can't say it enough, mathematics is very important, and if you aren't up to a certain baseline level, you don't have, yeah, your chances of passing the first year are not great. So we really want to make sure that our students are capable of passing the first year. So this is why we've introduced this. So again, when you take this test, please take it seriously. And um, really, it's, it's an opportunity that we're giving you as a student to, uh, to make sure you're on, you know, you're on, you've got the baseline level of math before you start the program. So you can do these things in the summer. So it's our gift to you. <laughs> And there's also a person who's in the front who's been had its hand up for a long time. So maybe this question and then the guy in the front. <laughs> okay, so it's regarding IB. If you take business HL uh, in IB, do you think how useful do you think it is to like how familiar is it to the course here? Does it help you? Uh, I did not do business. I do not. I'm not sure of what you'll do in business, but um, uh, I have a couple of friends who have done business in other universities who say that it doesn't help that much because what you've done in business HL, you kind of redo in uh, a business course over here in IBA. So if you do it, it's all well and good, but you're going to come across the same thing and a bit more in IBA, definitely. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't make a di difference if you did, you talk a lot about IB. Uh, if you come from an international school, it doesn't make a difference if you did IB or if you did uh, British GCE A levels, for example, also with maths. Are they equally, uh, equally considered, like if you have two students, hmm. with one with IB, one with A-level, is one of them is better considered than the other one in order to get in, or does it doesn't make a difference? The, it doesn't make any difference for admission purposes. For admission, um, you can look on our website, and we have, I think there's about 65 different uh, diplomas listed. Uh, if you go to the website and you look at the requirements for that specific uh, uh, program, um, diploma, then you'll see what we think is necessary to pass the program, basically. So, um, for example, for A-levels, we always ask for uh, mathematics must be one of the A-levels exams, and we ask for certain scores. So the, the baseline of what we're asking for all the diplomas, that is what we think you need to succeed in our program. We have time for maybe two or more questions, I think. Uh, does it give you an advantage if you followed bilingual education and passed your CAE exam? And passed your what? Uh, uh, bilingual. bilingual education? Um, it's oh, that you, you on your high school, you follow classes in English in <laughs> yeah. the first four years. Um, does it give you an uh, advantage as in application? Oh. Um, it doesn't give you an advantage uh, in application um, because if, for example, say you did TTO, Fabio, uh, and Fabio, um, it, it's the same diploma at the end of the day, but it will give you a huge advantage, I think, uh, in the program itself. I think you guys can probably, um, uh, oh, yeah, I, because I, you've studied in English already, so all the words are similar. You're used to speaking English, used to writing in English, so that will give you an advantage. But from an admissions point of view, um, well, you're, yeah, you, you, you have a clearer motivation, perhaps, because you've already chosen at a young age uh, yeah, to, to do something international. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and like the transition, the language barriers will be, that it's, will be yeah. easier it's to just, overcome. It's yeah. just easier for yourself, but not uh, admission-wise, I think. No. One more question. Um, is one of you guys in a student group like a student vereniging, and would you recommend it? <laughs> can best you start. It's like a Dutch, right? Um, I'm not part of a student vereniging, I'm part of a study association, STAR. Um, I do know uh, some friends of mine who are part of it. If you want to have that as an extra type of fan group, I would really recommend it. Otherwise, you can also become part of a study association like STAR. It's just depending on what you want to balance, because I know from really um, student associations, they quite demand you to be there quite often in the week, and that's sometimes it's hard to balance with each other. And if a study association gets some extra academical or at least experience-related yeah. uh, advantages, I guess. Huh. Okay, this is about all we have time for. I just want to leave you with one tip, uh, sort of the golden rule. If you, um, if you uh, are wanting to apply to uh, the IBA program next year, uh, please apply before Christmas. And the reason I say that is because if anything 
uh, is missing in your application, we will have time to, we'll see it before uh, it's too late to submit something else. Because if you, if you this year, I think 80% uh, of the applications, and there were uh, more than 2,200 of them, came in, uh, I think, the last two days. And that means we are never going to be able to see your application. It's, everything is closed. If you miss something, some, last year we had somebody who had excellent grades in Favio, but they sent us, they uploaded, a, 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 I think, a file that was this big. We couldn't see the grades, and okay. that's it. So please, I cannot stress enough, apply early, because you're going to be, uh, you're going to be uh, um, evaluated on grades you already have, so there's no reason to wait. So good luck. <laughs>